Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Christian. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, good day. Whenever you are seeing this, I hope you are doing good. So today guys, we're going to be talking about misconceptions about your spiritual journey and just a few belief systems, a few mindsets, a few things that I want you guys to stop doing on your journey. Um, I think a lot of the messages, a lot of the downloads that I've been getting for the collective as we step into the end of the year are things that we want to make sure we're not doing again. Um, things that we want to make sure that we are doing these things better. We're doing these things in a more controlled way. Um, and just, you know, making sure that we have the right mindset about us, about what we're trying to do, because mindset is everything. You know, whenever you're trying to start something or end something, whether you want to bring something in your life or remove it from your life, the mindset that you have when you're trying to do that is definitely going to make all the difference. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Make sure you guys check the link in the descriptions to book a releasing session with me if you need to release some things and work with me on releasing before the year is out. Check the description to see how you can book one of those. Also, the self-led tarot courses are available and they're always going to be available. So if you've ever wanted to learn tarot from me, then check the description to get the self-led tarot course as well. Of course, you can shop with me, book with me, all of that good stuff. And I believe we have one more day, um, which is today, to shop the Pix Apothecary Black Friday sale. So if you guys are interested, then go ahead and shop that Pix Apothecary Black Friday sale as well. But let's go ahead and get right into this video. So I hope you guys are doing good, first off. Um, and I think I'll just kind of start with some misconceptions, like some belief systems that we need to break down in terms of our spiritual journey. The first thing, and I'm sure I've said this before to you guys, but the first thing is to realize and remember that you have always been on a spiritual journey. That's the first thing. Because I think a lot of us, we feel like, oh, I got off my spiritual journey. How do I get back on? Or I quit my spiritual journey. How do I get back into it? You cannot quit your spiritual journey, even if you die physically, even when you leave this earth, you will still be on your spiritual journey because you are a spirit inside of a human skin and you've been a spirit since the beginning of time. You've been a spirit, you've been matter, you've been a part of everything since the beginning of time. Everything is everything and it's been everything since the beginning of time. So you weren't created when your parents got together and had, had sex. You are always an egg, you are always life. You know, and I hear often that people say life began one time. And I definitely believe that life began one time. When life started, all life started. And it was just about life transforming, life evolving. But you have always been a spirit. So don't feel like you can get off your spiritual journey. Don't feel like you can stop your spiritual journey. Don't feel like you can take so much time away from it. And oh my God, should I even start back? I feel so guilty. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about how it feels after you haven't done it for a long time and getting back into it because you are a spirit energy. You know, no matter how long you spend away from meditation or prayer or whatever, you are a spirit energy first. So your spiritual journey can never stop. Um, and whether you are um, conscious of it or not, your spiritual journey is still going on. So that's the first thing I want you guys to stop thinking that your spiritual journey stops or it's messed up or you set yourself back so much whenever you stop working on your spiritual journey. Because in those off times, when you're not meditating, when you're not journaling, when you're dealing with depression, when you're dealing with anxiety, when you're going through a bad breakup, when you're dealing with grief, um, when you are struggling to put yourself together every day, that is just as important as those days when you're able to manifest, meditate, journal journal, spiritual bath, release, ancestor work, when you're able to do all of that before 1 or 2 p.m., you know, when you're able to wake up early and get it done, that is just as important as those days when you don't have the energy because spiritual work is about good and bad. Spiritual work is not about, you know, doing the work so you can be the happiest version of yourself. Spiritual work is about stepping into your purpose and your purpose may not be to have an easy life. Your purpose may be to motivate people with your struggle and that might suck, but Take it up with God. Don't take it up with me. You know what I'm saying? Like we have different purposes and nobody's path is supposed to be all good. There isn't a person alive, no matter how people, how many people they elevate, how many people they uplift. There isn't a person alive who is supposed to be all happy, all good, you know, just all everything. That's not how it is. You know, even Jesus, honey, had moments when he was like, what's going on? Why do I have to do this? I don't want to do this. Why have you forsaken me? You know, like what's happening? So it's normal to get off of your journey. It's normal to, you know, take some time away from doing the work because the work is going to happen whether you wake up or whether you don't wake up. 
whether you dedicate your time or whether you don't, whether you say, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to find a community, or you don't. The work is going to be done no matter what. You know, also, I want us to remember that our spiritual journey is not about getting to a point where we are healed. It's about stepping into a space where we are continuously healing. The things that have hurt you, they might always hurt you. They might always trigger you. They might always, you know, set you back a little bit emotionally. But that's the name of the game. You know, the journey is not perfect. So don't feel like it should be perfect. Don't feel like it should be mostly good because even that isn't an accurate depiction of the journey. The only thing that determines how you feel in your journey is your mindset. That's it. If you feel like you're doing the right thing, if you feel like you're on the right track, then you will feel more optimistic. You'll feel more positive. You'll feel more connected versus feeling like oh my god god why have you left me um my relationship is over my job isn't working out i'm about to have to move i don't know what's gonna happen god why have you put me in this situation versus feeling like god i'm so grateful that you got me out of that bad relationship i'm so grateful that you're showing me what i need to do to let go of this terrible job i'm so grateful that i'm about to move and see you move in big ways in my life as i step into this period of transition one outlook is one of lack one outlook is one of my life is supposed to be good. Why is it not good? Why is it not perfect? Versus another outlook that said my life is just supposed to be. Your life is just supposed to be. That's it. It just is. The good, the bad, the hard, the easy, the love, the hate, whatever you're experiencing, it just is. So a bad thing, this is bad. A bad thing that we do on our spiritual journey, we only feel good about the journey and feel good about God and feel good about ourselves when things are going good. When we're confused, when we have to release, when we're dealing with heartbreak, we rather turn away and keep doing the same old stuff versus challenge ourselves to be even more uncomfortable. But that's what the real spiritual journey looks like. A lot of us don't even want a true spiritual journey. Do you really want to do the work to break down every bad thought process, every bad coping mechanism, every bad point of trauma? Do you really, really want to do the work to do that? Because it looks hard. It does not look like meditation in the sun with the sun beating down. It don't look like that. It looks like crying every night. It looks like only having a little laughter when you're talking to your friends or when you're not thinking about the things that you're dealing with. It looks like being in darkness so the light can be prepared for you, you know, there is no light without darkness. There is no healing without going through the storm. And if you are on a spiritual journey or if you've decided this is my time to be on my spiritual journey, you know, if you decided that because you feel like it's going to make your entire life better, um, then you just need to stop. I don't know what I should tell you to do because like I said, there is no stopping your spiritual journey, but you need to dedicate your time to something else because you're going to be disappointed and you're going to take it out on God. You're going to take it out on the people around you and you're going to take it out on yourself. You're going to feel like, I don't know my purpose. I don't have a purpose. You know, I don't want to deal with this, so I'm not going to deal with this. Every time I pray, don't let that happen, so I'm going to stop doing that. You know, you can't step into anything in life thinking that it's going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, because nothing is going to be that. So you have to have in your mind what something is going to be. You have to have in your mind the reality of what a spiritual journey looks like, the reality of being on a journey of finding your way back to God, healing yourself, because you are trying to separate yourself from your flesh, from your humanity. From your ego, you know, our pride, our ego, addiction, um, you know, unhealthy coping mechanisms, bad habits, lack mindset. All of these things are very human things. You know, if we weren't humans, we wouldn't give a fuck about a job. What the fuck is a job? What the fuck is money? What the fuck is rent? You know, like if we weren't humans and we were just in our spirit body, a lot of these things wouldn't even matter. You wouldn't even be crying about a breakup. You'd be happy to allow that spirit to exit your life so something new can come in. You know, your mindset is everything. And if you feel like me being on my spiritual journey means that the relationships are going to go great, the conversations are going to go great, I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm not going to deal with this anymore, then you are mistaken. You cannot expect this journey to be easy because it's not easy and it's not for the weak. It's not for the weak. And if you feel weak and you're dedicated to this, then you're not weak. That's how you know you are strong. And I think we have to understand that true strength isn't in having perfect days. True strength is knowing how to get the fuck up even when you're having a terrible day. True strength is knowing how to pray no matter what, knowing how to give thanks no matter what, knowing how to see the bright side no matter what. And it's not about being delusional and feeling like nothing bad is happening because there are bad things that happen in life. But you have to be able to see why it's happening. And it's not to say that everything has a blanket why. Sometimes it's because 
we have to go through that to learn certain stuff. Sometimes it's because you have to see real truths about your family, real truths about your friendships. There's a lot of things that we would never see about people if we didn't go through certain grief or certain pain with them. You know, I always talk about friendship breakups. How can you really know that the people around you are jealous of you, that they're talking down on you, that they're wishing bad on you? How can you know that unless you see it, unless you go through the breakup, unless you go through the falling out, unless you go through the conflict? How can you see that? Your spiritual journey or a spiritual awakening is about an awakening. It's about seeing stuff that before you weren't able to see. It's about recognizing things that before you weren't able to recognize. That's going to hurt. It's going to be hard. The reality of a spiritual journey is that it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. There's nothing fun about it at all. There's nothing fun about not being able to rely on your ignorance to keep you happy and peaceful. There's nothing fun about it. People who are spiritually awakened, people who are really doing the work are suffering more than everybody else. You know how bad it is, how hurtful it is, how frustrating it can be to be the only one that's praying in your entire family. You know the burden that it is to be the only one that has their head on straight, to be the only one that has the gift of sight, to be the only one that understands why things are happening, what's going on. It is exhausting. Your spiritual friends are fucking exhausted. I am exhausted, honey. It's exhausting to be the one to have to give advice, to be the one to have to encourage. And even if you're not giving advice and encouraging, just having to see everything and having to know in your mind, this person is never going to get out of these types of relationships because they haven't dealt with the trauma that they experienced way back when. And they don't get it. And they're not willing to go to therapy. They're not willing to talk to their parents. They're not willing to release the things that have been affecting them. When you are awakened, you feel differently about the people in your life. You feel differently about life as a whole. And it is not an easy feeling. And most of the time, it's not a good feeling. You feel frustrated that people aren't willing to do the work, that people aren't willing to figure it out. And you have to remember that everybody is human. Everybody is human. And just like you have days where you don't feel like you can get it together, everybody has those days. But it's about the mindset. It's about recognizing I can have a human day and still not submit to the human experience that says everything is about me. I can't be embarrassed. I can't try new things. I can't be uncomfortable. Everything has to be easy or I'm not getting into it. You know, it's easier to just kind of lie down and settle in who life has made you, who the people in your life have made you become, what the grief has turned you into, what the anger and rage have turned you into. It's easy to just settle into that instead of being like, no, I want to change that. I want to go against everything I've been taught, everything I've been conditioned to think. And I want to think differently and feel differently and step into different things because your friends are not going to do that with you. Your family is not going to do that with you. Your children might not want to do it with you. You might be the only person trying to be better, trying to do better in your entire lineage. And it is going to be hard work. It's going to be hard to have to go no contact with people or have to only see people during the holidays. It's going to be hard to maybe have friends that you used to be so, 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 so close with like family. And now everything changed. You don't even know who they are anymore. It's going to be hard to realize that the things that once gave you peace, gave you comfort, are the things that keep you up at night and literally make you feel like I can't even believe that I was in that space. What the fuck was I doing? Why the fuck was I doing that? Why did I feel like that's what I deserved? Why did I feel like that's what I needed? Why did I feel like that's where I belonged? You know? I think also, too, something that we do wrong on our journey is thinking that there's a wrong and a right. There isn't a wrong and there isn't a right way to do your spiritual journey. God is going to show things to you when he wants to show them to you and how you need to be seen, how you need to be shown. You know what I'm saying? You might need to be seen in a certain light by the people around you. You might need your friends to be like, uh-uh, they on some weird stuff. I don't want to be around her no more. You might need the people in your life to turn their backs on you for you to learn what you need to learn. And God will allow that to happen so you can learn what you need to, regardless if it makes you feel sad, if it hurts your feelings. God doesn't really care about you crying for a couple of months if it's going to set you up for success for the next 80 years. And I've said that before. You might have a stressful day, a stressful week, a stressful six months, a stressful year sometimes. You might be living in habitual stress and frustration and anxiety but once you get to the end of that once you understand why you're in that once you once you understand what's triggering you once you understand you know everything that's surrounding that situation and you really get to the root of it it won't affect you the same anymore you'll have more control you'll have more control over your life you'll have more focus you'll be able to control your energy more and just be more um 
you'll be able to understand the things that are happening and not take them personally. You know, sometimes you can feel like I'm trying to be good, but why am I dealing with all of these issues? Why am I dealing with all of these things? Because you're trying to be good. Whenever you're trying to be good, how can you be good if you're not aware of the things that will cause you to go back to the bad stuff? How can you really be good? How can you really be good? Is a child really good if they're only able to make good decisions when people are looking at them? What about when nobody's paying attention? Is that same child going to be able to make good decisions? It's the same thing. How can you make good decisions if you never had to make them under pressure? How can you still turn to God, still turn to your journaling, still turn to your spiritual practices if you've never been in a space when you're at rock bottom and that's all you have to pull you back up? I didn't gain this faith in myself, this faith in God, this connection with God, this strength in my spiritual journey, in my spiritual walk. I didn't gain the faith, the confidence, the trust. I didn't gain that just because I gained it. I gained it because most of the things that I've loved the most in this life, I've lost. Most of the things that have brought me the most happiness are not in my life anymore. Most of the people that I love the most are gone. You know, most of the most comfortable spaces I've been in, I've been plucked from them. I've had to rebuild myself from ground zero. That means zero dollars, zero friends, zero people that I could call on more than once. It doesn't come easy. It doesn't come fun. It comes through fire. It comes through transformation. You know, and just like I was saying in a video before this, we don't get any we don't get any growth from just being in the light. You know, we have to be in the darkness. There has to be a moment of hibernation, a moment of renewal, a moment of change that allows you to build a new foundation where you can, you know, be better, do better, grow in a different direction. And that's never going to come from just being comfortable. So I really want us to stop feeding the human parts of us that tell us if we have a bad day, we're going to have a bad year. If we have a bad morning, it's going to be a bad day. If you're in a bad relationship or a bad marriage, you can never find love again. If you have bad friends, it's on you and you'll never be able to find a new connection again. If the people at your job or the people in your life or whoever, you know, are beating down on you, it's about you and everybody's going to be mean and nasty to you and you're never going to be able to find your way out of those situations and you're just going to be a victim forever. You know, it's on you. You have made yourself a victim because we are all a victim of something. Most people have been abused. If it hasn't been sexual, it's been physical. If it hasn't been physical, it's been verbal. If it hasn't been verbal, it's been emotional. If it hasn't been emotional, it's been psychological. A lot of us have experienced psychological and emotional abuse just from looking at the stuff that we read online. You know, you can be psychologically abused every day because of the stuff that you're seeing online. The stuff that you are feeding your body, the stuff that you're taking in your body, from social media, from the news, from all the crazy wild things that are happening in the world. You know what I'm saying? Look at what's going on in Palestine right now. Do you think that people are okay? We are not okay. Think about everything that people had to see during 2020. Think about everything that we had to see. We were in quarantine and had to get out of our quarantine state, had to leave the safety of our homes to go protest with masks on because police killed George Floyd. People are having to do the same things now. We're having to figure out how we can donate, how we can help, how we can connect with the people that are over in Palestine being bombed and being killed. And there's nothing physically that we can do. We are physically powerless. All we can do is call our officials, donate money, share stuff, post stuff, use our voice. That's it. But we have no power. We are powerless in so many different ways. But what you do have power over is your mind. You have power over your spirit. You have power over how you allow things to affect you. And it's not to say that nothing's going to bring you down or make you feel insecure or make you feel doubtful or make you feel like, God, why am I even here? What's the point of this? You're going to feel that way. That is normal. We all feel that way sometimes. If somebody says they don't feel that way, they lie. Everybody has felt that way. But it's about how you deal with those feelings. It's about going on your knees sometimes and being like, God, I need answers. That's something else you, have to, you guys have to stop doing in your spiritual journey. Don't feel like you have to look at my videos or look at somebody else's videos. I always book a reading to get answers. Yes, I want you to book readings with me because I have bills to pay. But I want you to be able to go to God by yourself. I want you to be able to get on your knees, pray, and get answers from source. The only source. Because the way God talks to you is not going to be the way I talk to you. 
the way God talks to you is going to be the way that you understand. It's going to be a way that you hear, a way that you feel in your body that is so unique. Everyone's intuition, everyone's divine wisdom is going to hit differently for them. It's going to affect them differently. It's going to shift their mind differently. And you have to be able to do that for yourself. So I also don't want you guys feeling like you have to have someone else tell you how to do it because you don't. I think it's good to have people that you can watch to be encouraged. But what do you think I do? Because I don't watch nobody when I need encouragement. I have to encourage myself. You know, and I'm not saying that to be like I do it on my own because I do have a church that I go to that I love, but I'm not there all the time. They're only open on Sundays. So what do I do in the middle of the week when I need encouragement? And there's not a YouTube person I can look at. There's nobody that I can, there's nothing I can read to give me encouragement. What can I do? I have to go to God. That's it. Your spiritual journey is not about how many YouTubers you subscribe to. It's not about how many cards you book, how many classes you book, how many mentorships you book. Because that doesn't mean nothing if you cannot confer with God on your own after every reading, after every session, after every video. And that's what I want y'all to start doing. After you watch a video, after you get a reading, pray, meditate, journal, tap in with your spiritual compass and what you need. Because what you need and what you feel is right. It's right. What you need and what you feel is correct. Don't feel like because everybody else is looking happy after that meditation and you're in tears, you're doing something wrong. Don't feel like because everybody else is, you know, feeling good about their manifestations and you're still trying to figure out what's the first step. Your journey is your journey. Everybody else has a different upbringing, different parents, different teachings, different things that are available to them. So God is going to put you in a position that only you need to be in. And you have to understand, why do I always feel like I'm wrong? Why do I feel like I can't do it on my own? Why do I feel like I can't nourish myself? I can't push myself. I can't elevate myself. Why do I feel like that? What is making me believe that? What is making me trust that? What is making me have so much faith that I'm not who God says I am? What is making me believe that? You know, it's like the human parts of us, we have so much faith that we are insecure, that we're unattractive, that we don't have it, that we're a failure. You will believe that you're a failure more than you will believe that you are a child of God that is destined for a purpose. You will believe that you ain't never going to find love more than you believe that you are destined to help a multitude of people elevate themselves on every level. You will believe the lies about you more than you will believe the truth. We are in a constant battle of spirit versus flesh consistently 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 it is the whole point of religion it's the whole point of a spiritual journey of a spiritual walk it's the whole point of therapy of meditation of journaling of yoga of pilates of going to the gym you know what do people always say if you have mental health issues go to the gym you're trying to fight your flesh and fight your chemical imbalance that's telling you that you should jump off a cliff because your coffee is cold you know what i'm saying like when you have a chemical imbalance that makes you feel like because you're going to be late to this party, you shouldn't go at all because you're going to be thrown tomatoes. People going to throw tomatoes at you and talk about you and do you down bad. It's like we be feeling like one mistake is going to just set us up with so much failure, so much embarrassment, so much disappointment. You know, it's like we have to fight those thoughts every day that tell us one wrong move, one wrong meditation, one wrong prayer, one wrong word. We're never going to be heard by God again. It's going to mess up everything that we've been building. We have to fight against that and believe that we are right, that we are valid, that we are worthy. Whether it makes sense or not, because God is right and worthy and valid. And is always validating us, whether we can feel it or not. The fact that you wake up every morning is validation from God that you should be here. If God didn't want you here, you wouldn't be here. And there's been many times where God could have took you out and, and didn't every night. Every night when we are asleep, God could stop your heart. He could stop your breathing. You wouldn't know what's going on. We have so many times when we out of our body and we don't even recognize it. You are being held in God's hands more than you can understand, more than you can even re realize, more than you can even grasp. So you have to stop beating yourself up and feeling like your journey has to look one way or feel one way because your journey, the key word is your so I want you guys to pray and talk to God before you talk to me, before you talk to anybody, before you even ask your friends advice. Build a spiritual journey that's based on you getting closer to God because that's the only thing that matters. It doesn't matter the tools you use, the religion you practice, the, the people you listen to. All that matters is that it's getting you closer to God so you and God can be like this. You don't need to be like this with your tarot reader and be like this with God to where you can't even make a move unless you call this person and get a reading. That's not what God wants. That's not what God wants. 
that's not what I want. You know, I've always said my goal has been for you to be self-sufficient in your healing journey. Literally, that is what I want. I want my clients to be able to book with me once a year and take care of themselves for the rest of the 365. That's what I want. I want you to be able to handle your own trauma, handle your own pain, handle your own triggers. Yes, we can talk. Community is important. But you have to be able to stand on your own spiritually because the devil is not going to fight me to get to you. He going to fight you. The darkness, your depression, your insecurity, your ego, your pride, your trauma, your triggers, it's not going to fight me. It's not going to fight your friend. It's going to come to your door. It's going to come in your dreams. It's going to come in the people you connect with. It's going to come in the people you lay down with. So you have to be able to handle your own issues, handle your own questions, get to your own answers for yourself. I know a lot of people that cannot even answer their own questions. Why am I insecure? They don't even know why. You know why. You've been in your body since day one. You've been interacting with everybody you've interacted with. It's been you. How do you not know why you're insecure? How do you not know? People be like, oh, I don't know why I, I don't know why I. Stop saying that because you do know. You might not want to accept. It might be pushed down in your memory bank, but you know. It's about calling on that knowledge, calling on that wisdom. And asking God, why do I do this? It will be revealed to you. It will be revealed. You have to ask for the question, one. And you have to be cognizant that the answer is on the way, two. Ask for the question and be cognizant that it's on the way and be looking. Nothing is a coincidence. Nothing is by chance. Be looking because the answers are going to come in what you see, what you feel, what you experience. And that's what we need to be mindful of. That's what we need to keep our, our focus on. That's what we need to keep our mind on because there are so many things that we need to step into, so many things that we need to achieve, so many things that we are worthy of that maybe we don't even feel worthy. Maybe we don't even feel like we have what it takes to step into these things, you know? But you have to encourage yourself. You have to remind yourself. You have to uplift yourself. And you have to stop feeling like you don't know yourself when you do. Maybe everybody makes you feel like you don't know yourself. Maybe you allow people to tell you, oh, that ain't how you feel. Maybe you've been gaslit so much. How about you reverse gaslight yourself? How about when you start to tell yourself that you're wrong or you're insecure? You say, no, I am the most secure person I know. I'm not insecure. I'm the most confident person I know. I'm beautiful. I'm strong. I'm powerful. Just like people can feed you lies and make you believe that. How about you start feeding yourself the truth? How about you start feeding yourself what God has told you you are, who God has told you you are? Because God knows you. God made you. God made you for a specific purpose. You're supposed to heal. You're supposed to uplift. You're supposed to change the narrative. And through doing that, through stepping into that, it's going to happen for you as well. So yes, guys, um, that was just a little spiel of some misconceptions about our spiritual journey and some things that I want us to do differently in 2024. You know yourself, so act like it. You know yourself, so act like it. You know yourself better than I do. Better than any reader, better than any pastor, better than any parent, anybody. Your parents don't even know you like you know you. You know you. Don't let people tell you that they know you better than they better than you do because you do, they lying. Don't let people tell you that they know you better than you do because that's a lie. You know you. If you've been believing what people have said about you, start there. Write that stuff down. What are things that people have said about you that you do not want to believe? Whether it's really, really good stuff because people always will tell me, Oh, I feel like you're so confident. I feel like you're so personable because I have social anxiety. I don't like being around new people and I don't like being in groups of people. People are always so surprised by that because of what I do. I can't believe that I'm this confident, outgoing, extroverted person if that's not the truth of who I am. I know that's not me. I know who I am online. I know who I am around my friends. I know who I am around people I don't know. I can't even believe the good stuff that people say about me because that's not my truth. It's not my truth that I walk into every room and own the room and work the room and socialize. That's not the truth. I do not do that. So even if you think that, and even if you feel that way about me, even if it's a positive outlook, it's not me. It's either a truth or it's a lie. That's it. If you have people and you say, oh, I'm feeling insecure. And they're like, no, you're not insecure. You're gorgeous. You're confident. You're talented. No, I feel insecure. You have to acknowledge your truth for you. And you have to acknowledge that and own that and work through that for yourself. It doesn't do you any good to listen to the falsities, even if it's, you know, supposed to make you feel better. No, you need the truth and the truth will set you free. And there is no good or bad. It's either truth or it's not. It either is or it ain't. 
That's it. There is no good or bad. It either is or it ain't. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know how you feel down below about some things that you want to do differently in your spiritual journey in 2024. I'm definitely looking forward to hearing from you guys. Um, but yeah, I hope everyone has a great day. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys. Bless.